Hi, now what I've got here is an example for you to try. I'm assuming you've watched the previous video in my series on velocity vectors. In it I showed you, given a velocity vector, where we had i and j representing directions in the east and north respectively, that we could calculate the speed and the bearing. So if you would like to give this a try, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video, come back when ready, and we'll run through the solution. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So to do something like this, what we need to do is set up a north direction. I'm going to have north up the page, okay? So we've got north in that sense. So our vectors i and j, i is going to be in an easterly direction and j will be upwards in a northerly direction. So we've got our ball, let's just mark our ball on, let's say here, and we've got our north direction then up like so. And we can see that the velocity of the ball is minus 5i minus 12j. So that means that essentially we're going to go 5 units in this direction in the negative sense for i, and then minus 12j, so that will be downwards, okay, 12 units. This is not drawn to scale, but it will just give you, hopefully, an idea. We've got our components then, where we go 5 units that way and 12 units down. So we have our velocity vector, minus 5, minus 12. We'll call that V, okay? So we'll say, let V be that velocity vector, and it equals minus 5i minus 12j. And you'll notice I'm underlining my vectors purely because I can't write them in bold. So in the previous video, I showed you that the speed is the magnitude of velocity given by the length of this line here. And we calculate that speed as the magnitude of velocity Okay, we just use this notation by Pythagoras' theorem. So in this example, it's going to be the root of the sum of the squares of our components. And we can ignore negative signs. We're only concerned with the lengths here. So it's going to be the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. So this is the square root then of 25 plus 144. That's going to be the square root of 169. And the square root of 169 is exactly 13. Notice, by the way, that I don't write plus or minus. I quite often get people asking me, why haven't I written plus or minus here? Well, we're talking about a speed here, which is only a positive value. OK, so we take the positive value. And don't forget the units here, it's 13 metres per second. Now, as for the bearing, OK, we just put a subtitle here. As for the bearing, then we're looking at the angle turned from facing north, turning in a clockwise direction until we hit that direction for the velocity. So this is what we want to find. That will be our bearing. But in order to do that, what I'm going to do is work out this angle in here, this acute angle, which I'll call theta. And then what I'll do after that is I'll take 3 quarters of a turn, which is 270 degrees, and then subtract my angle theta. OK, so let's just calculate uh, what theta is. And we can do that by basic trigonometry. We know that tan of theta is the opposite over the adjacent side, so that would be tan theta equals 12 over 5. And I can inverse that, so theta equals the inverse tan of the opposite side, 12, over the adjacent side, 5. So if you work this out on your calculator, make sure you're in degrees mode. You'll find that you get 67.380 and so on degrees. So when it comes to working out what that bearing is, then all we're going to do now 
is just do 270 degrees then minus my angle theta. So therefore what we've got is the bearing equals 270 degrees minus the 67.380 and so on degrees. Work that out and you end up with 202.619 and so on degrees. And we normally give bearings to the nearest degree. So this is going to be 203 degrees and if we just say that that's to the nearest degree. Alright, so hope you've been able to get that and understand how to do it if you had a problem. Okay.